Hey guys, Joe from the Crazy New York Driver Show. Today is Friday, February 21st, 2012. Today we're going to talk about how to try and identify shill bidders on eBay. And we're also going to discuss some more of what we talked about last week. Bad buyers who consistently leave negative feedback and low DSRs. So we've got a pretty full plate today. Before we get into that, I decided to tell you a little interesting anecdote that happened to me on eBay. As you know, anytime I encounter a deadbeat bidder, I automatically block them. And I really strongly suggest all of you guys too. If a guy dicks you over one time, he'll dick you over again. So. A while back, I had a guy who bid on my item and didn't pay for it. And he was one of these guys who will bid on, who does, he did a buy it now, all right, and I never heard from him again. Four days went by, I sent him the unpaid item notice. Four more days, I closed out the case, he got a strike, I relisted the item. In other words, a typical eBay bidder. Anyway, that was a good three or four months ago. So the other day I get a, a question for seller on one of my items. And I look at the guy's user ID and I recognized it. I said, I think it's this same deadbeat. So I was in a rush. So I answered his question. I didn't accuse him as to who he was right away. I answered his question and left the house and went to work. Over the course of the day, this sad sack emails me four more times with four innocuous questions about the same item. And I was almost certain it was the same guy. So after about the third or fourth question, I went back to my, ball, uh, I went to my blocked bidder list and checked. And it was the same guy. What happened was his original account, he got kicked off eBay for not paying. So he started this new account with the same name with one different number after it. And, I, and the same item he's asking about. I said to him, hey, I blocked you last time. You're a deadbeat bidder. I know who you are, and I identified him by his other name. Never heard from him again. Can you really believe that? Can you really believe that? He got bounced off eBay, came right back with another name, and asked me about the same exact item he didn't pay for the first time. So I thought that would kind of cheer you up a little. Let's get started with some new material. I'm always happy when I hear from you guys after I make a video, because you guys have a lot of good comments. I love to read them. They're interesting. I especially love the comments where you guys have a problem and you relate it to me. Often I use your problem on a video and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to talk about shill bidding. This is a topic we haven't talked about for some time. For the few people out there who don't know what shill bidding is, it's when you have two eBay accounts one is a seller where you sell something. The second one is a fake buyer where you bid on your own item to try and inflate the price. This, is a, this of course, is against eBay rules as it should be. Back in the old days, it was easy to ID a scammer like that because all you had to do was click on their history, see what they purchased, what they bid on, what they didn't. But a few years ago, eBay got the idea to mask people's identity for security reasons. And quite frankly, I thought that was a bad thing for my own reasons. Not just because of the scammers, but because it used to save me a lot of time. If I may, another little story. As you know, I'm in the cat and toy department as far as what I sell. And I don't have the time to research all the things that are on sale that I really want to buy on eBay. So what I used to do, I used to 
actually track what my competition was bidding on. It was really easy because I knew who to track and it would save me time. There was just one particular guy in my line and this guy was such a fool and I'll tell you why. He would find a good item at a good price. Let's say the item just was listed today. Let's say the item is worth $300 and the bidder starts it at $10. I mean the seller starts it at $10. This guy would bid the very first day, the very first moment he saw it, and he would bid the minimum, $10. He was a class A fool. And I warned him about it in the past. Because what I would do is I would do a bit of search with his name, and there is the item. I'm like, oh my God, a $300 item for $10? I wouldn't bid on it then. I'd put it in my watch list and I'd come in in the last 10 minutes and snipe it. But yet, what he would do is he would revisit the item sometimes six or seven times during the week. Maybe a guy would bid $20 or $30. He'd come back in and bid again and again. And in addition to that, this fool would always be on the last minute and snipe the auction too, like I'm doing. Now, there's nothing wrong with sniping, but my point is, why didn't he just put it in his watch list, wait till the very end, and then snipe it? That would have been great for him, because he wouldn't have been cluing me in as to what he was bidding on, and he wouldn't be cluing others in as well. So I knew this guy pretty good. Good to the extent that he would call me. But anyway, I would say, listen. Don't bid a week ahead of time. I'm giving you a heads up. I'm watching you. You're just cluing me in. He laughs like it's a big joke and he continues to do it. I continue to ride his coattails and bid at the last minute. And quite often I would win. One day he finally sends me an angry letter from eBay contact system telling me to go F myself. So it's just a, a little story I wanted to tell you. It's not good to bid too early. Even today, with the masked IDs, with the letter and the three stars and the other letter, that is not an answer because I have cracked that code. It takes a long time to do, and I'll explain it to you now. Let's talk about chill bidders and how it relates to this code. When you sell something, Let's just say, for instance, I'm going to take this fictitious auction. I typed this up and printed it out. Originally, I was going to do a screenshot of this, but I decided against it because, for some reason, you people like to see me rant in person more than a screenshot. So I'm going to hold this up to the camera here, and I'm going to explain how this works. Let's say there's an item that was listed a few days ago by an eBay seller named John Smith 18 and he received several bids. Let's say you are bidding on the item because you really want it. You're the first bidder and you bid $9.99. Then another guy jumps in and bids and you and him have a little bidding war. It would look something like this. Let's see if I get a close shot, okay? You'll see the first bid was $9.99. That's your bid. Then the other guy then you, then the other guy, etc., etc. You'll see nobody else bid on the item but you and the other guy. Okay? Now you'll notice the other guy only has a feedback of two. Alright? He's only done two transactions, so he's kind of new or something, right? If it wasn't for that guy, you would have gotten the item for $9.99. But because of that guy, you didn't. You had to pay $15.50 in this case. Now let's say you had a gut feeling that this particular guy was a shill bidder. How would you know? Well, there's a couple of ways. You could go back to John Smith's feedback, the seller. Because keep in mind, if this guy is a shill bidder, it's John Smith that's doing it. So you'd go back to his feedback and you'd click on it. 
and see if there was a bidder with one or two feedbacks that had bid repeatedly on John Smith. Okay? So if you found, let's say, John Jones with zero feedback, one. John Jones with one feedback, one. And John Jones with two feedback, one. All on this same guy, you'd know you had yourself a shield bidder. All right? I know it's kind of hard to follow, so I have a second example, which I think is going to help you even more. Because this pisses me off. I was a victim of this a few years ago. Let's say the same example happens. You bid on an item, all right? You bid, you're the first guy out, you bid $9.99. Then the suspect bidder comes in. Then you, then him, then you, then him, then you. Let's say near the very end of it, he bids and he's top bidder. And all of a sudden you get a letter from eBay saying he retracted his bid. Have any of you ever gotten that, a bidder retraction notice, where now you have become top bidder by default, that is something you need to worry about. And I'll tell you why right now. Remember, this guy's bid four or five times on the item against you. He really wants it. But as soon as he becomes top bidder, oh, he's changed his mind. He don't want the item now. And what you do is you click at the bottom of the auction where it says bid retractions. This is the guy right here, and it will say, see it right there? See the, see the reason? Explanation, entered wrong amount. That is bogus, and I can prove it. Here's the history. He's bidding in increments, right? Everything's fine. Everything's fine till he outbids you. Then all of a sudden, he doesn't want the item anymore, and you're top bidder. That's an example of a shill bidder who's fishing to see how high he can bring the price. Again, a second way to prove it would be to go back to John Smith's feedback, because anyone that enters in this kind of behavior has done it before. You'd check his feedback, you'd click on the 45, you'd see if he had the same bidder who won his auctions in the past. You know, sometimes he would win his own auction by accident. Do you understand? It's living proof. In my early days on eBay, this happened to me a few times. I was a victim where the guy would back out. In the very early days of eBay, instead of the item going down to the original bid, it would go down to one bid below. So I'd be stuck spending $15. I said, hey, no, that ain't going to fly. I'm taking this item for the opening bid because the guy who inflated the price, flew the coop, okay? I hate shill bidders. I have identified them in the past, and I have dimed them out. I'm sure you guys have identified them too. Anytime there's an auction, I don't care if you're the buyer or the seller, and you get one of these cats that retracts his bid, it's always I shouldn't say always, I will say it's 98% of the time illegitimate reasons. There are two reasons why they do it. One is because they're a shill bidder driving up the price of their own item. Number two is after they bid on your item, they found it cheaper elsewhere and they're retracting their bid. That's not an acceptable reason. Think about it. Anytime someone does that to me, they're automatically blocked. They'll never get to retract the bid on me again. Am I being strict? No, I'm being careful. Okay? So do you guys now understand what I'm saying about how to track a person using this code? It's a little work. Because, again, let's go back to this explanation here. Let's just say this bidder won the item. All right? He didn't retract his bid. He beat you. What you would do is you'd wait a week or so, and you'd go back to John Smith's feedback, and you'd click on it, and you'd see who this guy is that's driving the price up, and research him, and see if he has bid on John Smith's stuff before. And if he has, you know he's busted. Okay? It's a little work. I hope I was clear enough and explained it to you. One of my subscribers had written to me about this the other day, and I explained it to him. And I hope I was helpful to him. All right.
Let's move on and talk about what we talked about last week. These buyers that consistently leave people negative, neutral, and low DSRs. I got a lot of response from this. In fact, one of my subscribers, one of you nice people, sent me the name of an eBayer who was doing it, and I meant to use it in today's video, and being the schlep that I am, I can't find it. So if you're the guy that sent me that guy's name, would you please put it below so everybody can see it, and I'll comment on it, and make sure it's brought to life. I'll even put a link. Speaking of links, there's a program called Toolhouse, which I'm going to put a link to down below. A lot of you guys have mentioned this to me, but I've known about it for years. All right? It's a, it's a nice little handy program. You can type anybody's eBay user ID in, and you can see how many negs were left for them or left by them. I would really like all of you guys to check this program out if you haven't already, so I will be putting a link in there later once I get this video uploaded. I have no problem with anybody checking out my history. All right? I double checked it just to be sure. I mean, I hardly ever neg any sellers. I've negged maybe in my life. I've been on since 2000, since 2000, since 1999. I checked all the negs I've left. I've left maybe in all those years, five for sellers. And they were because the person scammed me. They took my money and sent me nothing or they took my money and sent me Taiwan crap. In all those years, five people, and they deserved it. Now, who else did I need? During the early years of eBay, we were allowed to neg deadbeat bidders. And boy, did I ever neg them. According to my record, I negged, if my memory's correct, over the years, 72 deadbeat bidders. Come on, guys. Come on. Stand up and give me a hand. How many of you guys negged 72 deadbeat bidders over the years when you were allowed to? I did. I can prove it. All right? I would love to see them bring back the power to sellers to neg a deadbeat bidder, or even if they, if eBay himself would neg a deadbeat bidder. There's nothing anyone hates more than a deadbeat bidder. Am I right, or am I wrong? Well, your homework for the week class will be to list the names, the eBay usernames of people, who, of buyers, who are leaving too many negative feedbacks for sellers and neutrals and low DSRs. It doesn't matter if it happened to you or not, I don't care. But if you've come across someone like that, like my subscriber did, please comment the name below. It would help all of us out. If you come across the names of any deadbeat bidders, like the one I mentioned last week, VR Spidey, please comment. It's for the good of the community. I am committed to make eBay safe and reliable. A good trading place for you, for me, and for you. We need to work together. Those of us that are honest sellers. And most of you are. 99.9% .9 of you are. I am against scammers. I'm against dishonest people. I'm against, I'm against shill bidding and fake bids to increase the price of your item. Do you have any questions for me? If you do, you can either leave a comment below or you can PM me directly. Okay? I guess there's nothing else to say, but I'm Crazy New York Driver and you're not. Thanks for watching. Hope this little video was helpful. If you have any suggestions for next week's video, tell me. If it's possible, I'll get action. Thanks for watching, guys.
Peace out.